Okay, so someone asks, Ellie Bowers, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but I, I hope that's right. How do you do what you do? I need to get out, I need to get to where you are, but I don't know how. Well, the thing is, um, Ellie Bowers, I didn't actually know how either. That's the thing, you don't need to know how. When I first started, I had to, uh, a very strong desire. So I got out of prison, I stayed sober, I left gangs, I wanted to give back, and I had a really burning desire in my chest here. I wanted to inspire people to change their lives, I wanted to help animals. And that desire drove me to do what I do, to get to where I am. That's all you need. Uh, you need that drive, that desire, and you have to be determined and passionate. You don't need to know how to get where to get to where I am. You don't need to know that. You just need to have that desire and you need to act on it. You can spend a whole decade wondering how you're gonna do it and you've just wasted a decade. What you have to do, it might seem really like an easy thing to say, but you just have to do it. You have to start the first step. Make the first step and that's how you get to where you're going. But if you don't ever make that first step because you're so frozen by, you're so frozen by the how, how am I gonna do it? How am I gonna get there? What the, the main thing is you need to start and you need to start somewhere and you need to start small no matter how small. And it might seem small and insignificant to you at the start, but you've started. And that's, I've, I've spoke to people two years ago that wanted to start doing something. Looking at them now, they haven't even started. Been two years. So that's the thing, you, you don't wait, you don't be complacent, you just go, go for it. And I didn't have a desire to, I didn't go, oh yeah, I want, I want to have this, this following on all my platforms and all that. No, I just said, oh, this is what I kept repeating to myself, I want to inspire people, I want to help animals. I was angered by the injustice and that's what drove me and uh, I didn't really care about anything else. Another thing about that is that people look at my my platforms and they think, oh, Joey just, that fell on Joey's lap. That just, that platform fell on Joey's lap. Not at all. If you know the amount of work that I put in, the amount of video content that I've edited, I used to sit there captioning my own videos. I didn't even know how to spell. Like, the amount of work that I've put into all of my platforms with a hardcore animal rights message, to, de to develop the, fo I'm surprised that I've developed the following that I have. I'm actually surprised at that because I'm a very hard activist to follow. I don't talk bullshit. I don't pander to people. I'm straight in your face. I say what I, what, what I feel like needs to be said. And I'm showing gas chamber footage and I'm calling people animal abusers. And I'm surprised that I've got the following I have. But the thing is like, you'll probably develop a following faster than me if you put the work in because you, you might not, not be the same as me. You might, you might actually you might actually um, resonate with more people because the type of guy I am might, might not resonate with a lot of people and a lot of, you know, people don't want to, wow, this guy's a little bit too much for me, you know? You'll probably develop a platform faster than me um, if you put the work in. And I had a job. When I got out of prison um, and I got off Home D, uh, I got a job Brickland when I was a labourer I was working 40 hours a week, shoveling sand, mixing concrete, um, stacking bricks, wheelbarrowing bricks around all day for a year. And I was on a very low wage, but I wanted to stay sober. I wanted to, to do the right thing. I quit that job because I, I felt like it was sucking my energy and I wanted to give my energy elsewhere. So I quit that job. And my idea was that if I put myself in a happy state, I would be able to attract the way. So while I was in that job, it was sucking out all my energy and I couldn't use that energy to attract the things I wanted in my life or to use my energy to inspire. So I left that job. And two weeks later, I got another job uh, being a traffic controller, which took less of my energy. I could work three days a week and make the same amount of money. So that's what I attracted within two weeks of just taking myself out of that environment, becoming centered. And I found a job that I could actually do activism four days a week. And my form of activism was making video content, doing street interviews and yada, yada, yada. And I, I had to go to work three days a week. And even I, I was filming at work, I was doing my, uh, on my phone at work, it's traffic control. You set up a few signs and you sit there all day. So I made it happen. I made it happen. And I was working that job for a couple of years 
while I was making my content. And people are like, oh, Joey, this fell on, this fell on Joey Carbstrong's lap. No, I fucking didn't. No, I fucking didn't. I come from fucking hell. I come from hell. I was suicidal. I was addicted to meth. I was in high-level organized crime gangs that were trying to kill each other. I pulled myself out of that, got sober, which was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. I worked a shit kicking job. I love I love my mate that I work for, but it was a hardcore job. It ain't no, it was, a, it was a full on, it was the hardest job I've ever done. Shoveling sand, mixing concrete, stacking bricks, laying bricks all day for eight hours a day in the sun, 40 hours a week. Making a very m mediocre amount of money. I was grateful, but, and then I got a job and I was doing the activist on top of it and I was editing constantly. Camera work, who, who, who edited? No one was editing my stuff. You know who was editing it? Me. I did that shit. I grabbed a shitty old phone, cost me $100 Australian dollars, which is 50 pounds or like 70 USD. Got it second hand for a little shitty iPhone 5. And I filmed all my videos on that, literally. And then I got a, a second hand laptop, which was 500 AUD, 500 Australian dollars, which is it was nothing. I got it second hand. Um, and that's what I'd edit my content on. And I've did it every single day since. I've done it every single day since. That was four and a half years ago or something. You know what I mean? And then you get these people, like, who like, oh, like, Joey got a big following for these reasons. For these reasons. No. I worked my fucking ass off. That's how I got the following. You try to get a following in animal rights. It's hard. It's hard. If you're Earthling Ed, who's just an amazing human being, he speaks so articulately, the most educated, like he's amazing, he's talented. This guy is talented. And he's, his demeanor is so watchable. He's one of my favorite activists, amazing. You know, yeah. But if you're someone like me, which didn't, I couldn't even spell properly. I come out of um, gangs and I, I didn't know how to, I had no social skills, no social skills. Like, like if you come from where I come from, you don't really develop social skills. I had PTSD. Coming out of drug addiction, anxiety, trauma, all of this stuff, like watching over my shoulder all the time, because like, you know, like, and to come out of that and got hop on social media, that type of paranoia and that type of, you know, coming from that type of life was hard. It was hard. Um, but your desire has to outweigh how hard it is. Your desire to do it has to outweigh how hard it is. What's harder? You know, what's harder, living your whole life doing nothing and then you know dying laying on your deathbed like well i had one chance at life i don't know what's going to happen here before i die it's, it could all go black could all go black and there i'm gone never and you never exist ever again and that's it you had a short window of opportunity on the world and i blew it i blew it because i was too scared imagine that you know what i mean and a lot of people live their life like that they live their life in fear and then they have all these regrets on their deathbed and I didn't want that to be me. That was my number one fear. I'm scared of dying. I'm scared of dying without living my life, without leaving a positive mark on earth. So I know that was a, that was a hell of a lot of, you have a lot to think about whoever gave me that first question, but that's what it takes. That's what it took for me anyway. It might take less for you. I don't know, but that's what it took for me. So don't look at, don't look at me and go, that was an easy road to get there. No, it wasn't easy. But does that mean it's impossible? Hell no. Hell no. It just means you have to be dedicated. You have to be doing it for something outside of yourself. You have to be uh, giving selflessly about this. If animals are important to you, if making a difference is important to you, trust me, you'll find the strength.